In just 10 seconds, diodes generate a laser beam passed through mirrors moving as fast as 10,000 millimeters per second. This is called a fiber laser, and it can carve super intricate designs into any metal in just seconds. The laser is essentially getting so hot that the metal is just vaporizing away like a hot knife through butter. Despite the laser's ability to cut through titanium, you'll be surprised to discover waving your hand in front of the laser does absolutely nothing. Fiber lasers simply aren't the right wavelength to interact with organic materials at these energy levels. We film the laser at regular speed, then in slow motion to reveal what we can't see with the naked eye. You can look almost anywhere in our modern world and find something that's been marked by fiber lasers. From consumer electronics to medical devices, maker spaces, garages, and even small YouTube studios. Fiber lasers start with diodes that turn electricity into light. The light travels to the laser cavity, a portion of the fiber optic cable that's doped with rare earth elements, where broad spectrum light is transformed into that of a single wavelength. Eventually, the laser exits the emitter and is passed on to the galvo head, where it's reflected by two mirrors moving as fast as 10,000 millimeters per second, which guide the laser beam to its target. The result, a 60 watt beam of focused light that can cut through titanium and steel. This fiber laser is pulsing anywhere from 20,000 to 400,000 times per second. And those pulses are lasting as little as a billionth of a second. These illustrations are drawn so rapidly, you can only see them sweeping across the surface with slow motion. And the pulses are so fast that even the highest speed cameras have trouble capturing them. Depending on the material used, the laser can react differently. For example, color is only possible on steel, whereas this aluminum can only be marked white. In this clip, we're marking aluminum. This is what I would consider a standard marking. The goal here is ablation, which is a fancy word for removing material from the surface of something. Generally, aluminum only comes up as white, and the reason for this is because it's a raw element. There's no alloy or other metals mixed in, which means that there's no room for weird chemical reactions to occur. The galvo mirrors are moving relatively quickly, but they may need to be slowed down a bit depending on the reflectivity of the material in order to ablate it. We're using about 48 watts here, which is 80% of our available power, and the laser's pulsing 25,000 times per second. Because our repetition rate is low, it gives the laser lots of time to charge up between pulses, which means a high energy beam so that we can actually chew in and remove that material. Here we're doing what we actually call a cleaning pass. So we've dropped the wattage way down and the laser's pulsing 45,000 times per second. Raising the number of pulses per second actually lowers the amount of time the laser has to charge up for each pulse, which results in a weaker impact with the material. That's ideal because instead of creating more mess, we're actually using the laser here to clean up the marking area so that we get better efficiency on future passes. The low rate of ablation also means that this is great for pushing debris and dust out of the way, almost like a broom. In this clip, we're marking stainless steel. This is where things start to get really interesting. Anybody can take a chainsaw and carve up a forest, but this is the scalpel at work here. When metal gets hot, it expands. And during these types of marks, we actually have to lock the metal in place because the laser is generating so much heat, the material begins to warp. Dropping the pulse width from 200 nanoseconds to 175 nanoseconds in conjunction with lower energy output, just 15 watts here, helps to make sure that we aren't ablating away the material. Because we're using a low power, we can actually just heat the surface of the steel in order to obtain this black mark. The extremely slow scanning speed of just 50 millimeters per second is essential here as well. It gives those low powered pulses enough time to actually heat the surface of the steel to the perfect temperature. For off by just a few degrees, we could end up with a red or a blue or we could carve into the surface of the steel, which is definitely not what we want. The steel is one of the only materials that we can mark with color, and that's due to the fact that the steel is ferrous, which means it contains iron. 
Color marking is the culmination of everything that we've talked about so far. As precise as we've had to be for the black marking, it's nothing compared to getting these colors. First, I have to point out that we reduced our pulse width down to six nanoseconds. That's six billionths of a second, six billionths. Each pulse contains extremely small amounts of energy, but we're pulsing the laser 300,000 times per second now, and that energy adds up. This fragile balance will apply an absolutely precise amount of energy to the surface of the metal, resulting in this beautiful color. These machines permeate all of our lives, whether we notice or not. They're both a practical necessity and a hypnotizing wonder. But most of all, they're a reminder that technology can feel like magic when you're living in the future.